Hey Code Crew, how's it going? In this Firebase crash course, you're going to learn how to set up your Firebase database and also how to create data, read data, update and delete data as well. Now, the initial setup of the Firebase database may be a little bit intimidating, especially if you haven't worked with Firebase before, but don't worry, that's why I'm here. After that though, the actual code to read data and create data is pretty simple. So, sound good? All right, let's get started. So first of all, go to firebase.google.com and then click on the sign up or login button in the upper right corner. In this case, I'm already logged in. Next, you're going to create a new project by clicking the add project button. And then you're going to give your project a name. It doesn't really matter what it is. This is just for identification inside your Firebase dashboard. Next, click create project. After you're in, click on the iOS icon where it says add Firebase to your iOS app. It's going to launch a wizard that will walk you through the next step, which is to add the Firebase code libraries, also known as the SDK, to your Xcode project. The first step, however, is to register your app, and you're going to need the iOS bundle ID of your app. Now, I'm going to type mine in right now because I know what it's going to be, but when we create our Xcode project in the next section, I'll point out to you where your bundle ID will be as well. So I'm going to type com.codewithchris dot firebase crash course i'm going to give the app a nickname and then i'm going to click register app all right so now let's jump on to the next step where we create our xcode project and i'll show you where your bundle id will be so you can go ahead and register your app now let's create our brand new xcode project we're going to choose single view app under ios and for the product name I'm going to put Firebase Crash Course, but you can put whatever you'd like. This product name together with the organization identifier is put together to create your bundle identifier as you can see on the screen. And again, you'll notice the bundle ID there in the project properties. And then you're gonna go ahead and close the Xcode project. Now it's time to use CocoaPods to install the Firebase SDK. If you're new to CocoaPods, it's simply a tool that helps you easily install and manage third-party libraries for your Xcode projects. I have a detailed video about how to install CocoaPods on your computer here, so go ahead and do that first if you don't have CocoaPods installed already. So assuming that you have CocoaPods installed, the next step is to open up Terminal and navigate to your project directory. Type in pod init to set up your project to use CocoaPods. And now if you navigate to the project folder, you're going to see a pod file. This is where you specify the third-party code libraries your app will use. So open this up in your text editor and then add these following lines. Pod Firebase Core. and pod Firebase database. Save the file and then close it. Then back in terminal, type in pod install. Press enter and CocoaPods will read the new entries and go fetch those code libraries for you. Now this might take a few minutes, so don't worry if there's no indication that anything's happening. Now after it's done, open up the XC workspace file. From now on, this is the file you want to open to launch your Xcode project because it'll include your third-party libraries. Now going back to the Firebase setup wizard, the next step is to download the Google service info.plist. This configuration file contains all of the information that your app needs to connect to the Firebase API and to access our database. Then click and drag this Google service info.plist file directly into the file navigator of your Xcode project. Now make sure copy items if needed is enabled and also add to targets is checked on as well. Click finish and we're done with this step. Now the last step is simply to initialize Firebase when the app is launched. And we can do that inside the app delegate. We're going to need to add an import Firebase statement at the top and then also a Firebase app.configure line in the app delegate. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, sometimes when you type in import Firebase, 
the Xcode project is going to complain that it can't find it, just press Command B to build your project so that Xcode knows that those libraries are there. And then the last step, the wizard is going to try to verify your installation by listening for a connection. So launch your Xcode project and run it in the simulator. Now for me, I had to do this several times. You might need to stop the project and then rerun it a couple of times for, to get this working. But once you do, you can get a little green check mark back in the wizard. Finally, click continue to console. And with that, you're finished with the setup. Now let's take a tour of the database. In the Firebase console, click on the database tab. That's going to bring you to a page where it's talking about the cloud Firestore, which is kind of their next version of the real-time database. The only thing is it's in beta right now, so I would recommend that you start with the real-time database if you scroll down a little bit. Once you get the hang of using this, it is not too late to learn about cloud Firestore, and hopefully by then it's going to be out of beta. So the real-time database is what I'm going to be talking about today. Click on Create Database. Now here you can start in locked mode or test mode. And I choose test mode whenever I'm developing an app because it's just easier not to have to worry about permissions or anything like that. It makes your database public and you can uh, just worry about doing the database transactions. And then after you finish your app, you can go ahead and turn it into locked mode. All right, so now you have your real-time database. You'll notice that it's not your traditional rows and columns. One thing you have to realize is that data is stored in JSON format in the Firebase database. If you're new to JSON, then I recommend checking out this video which I've linked to. Basically, data is stored as a series of key value pairs. A single key value pair contains a key and a value. Now this is an example of a key value pair, an employee ID with the name of an employee. As you can see, a key is some sort of ID and the value can either be a piece of data or actually, the value can be another key value pair or a whole bunch of other key value pairs, as I demonstrate here. Now the employee ID is the key and the value is a whole group of key value pairs which contains information about that employee. In the end, it's like a tree of nested key value pairs. And that's a short introduction to JSON. For more information, check out the video I linked to in the description below. Now let's take a look at writing to the database. Inserting data into the database is pretty easy. First, specify that you'll be using the classes in the Firebase libraries by using an import statement at the top. Next, you're going to create a database reference. Then specify the key path to the location you'd like to insert data to. The key path is exactly like it sounds. It's just a series of keys leading to that location. And call the setValue method. Inside the setValue method, you're setting the value part of the last key in your key path. So if you'd like to create a new key, you can just specify it at the end of your key path and it'll create it and set the value to it. If you'd like to auto-generate a random unique key instead, you can use the child by auto ID method. And then call the set value method to set a value for that auto-generated key. Next, let's take a look at reading data. With reading data, you can either retrieve the data once or you can specify an observer so that you get notified of data changes in real time. In this quick start tutorial, we're only going to be walking through retrieving the data once, and in a future video, we can cover observers. Okay, so once again, make sure you have the import statement at the top, create a database reference, and then specify the key path to the location you want to read from,
and then call the observe single event method. In this method, you can specify what you're retrieving. In this case, we want to retrieve the value of that key path. Then in the second parameter, you can specify a closure, which is the block of code you want to run when the data is returned. The closure has a data snapshot parameter that contains the results of the database call. From this data snapshot object, the results of your query are in the value property. Remember when I told you about key value pairs and how the value part can actually contain another key value pair, or even a bunch of key value pairs? Well, if it's a single value type, you can just cast it to whatever data type that is and use it. However, if it's one or more key value pairs, then you can cast it as a dictionary and then get the pieces of data you need out of the dictionary. I'll have to do a more detailed video on retrieving data because there's so much to talk about here, including sorting and filtering. For this quick start, we'll leave it at this basic data retrieval use case. Now let's take a look at updating data. For updating data, you can use the setValue method as well. Make sure you have the import statement at the top, create the database reference, specify the key path, and then use the setValue method to update the value for that key. There's also another method called updateChildValues that lets you update several values at once. Simply create a dictionary with all of the updates and pass it into the update child values method. For deleting data, there's a method called remove value. Again, make sure you have the import statement, create the database reference, specify the key path, and then call remove value. It's going to delete the key as well. So there you have it. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Just hit that big red subscribe button below. And if you want to see more tutorials like this one, just visit my website at codewithchris.com and make sure you sign up for the newsletter where you're going to get exclusive access to videos and tutorials before they're published anywhere else. Now I want to turn it over to you guys. Does Firebase Database seem like something that you can use for your app? Let me know right now by leaving a quick comment below. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Hey, did you join my free Facebook community yet? That's where I hang out along with a ton of other people learning iOS just like yourself. I also post early access to all of my videos inside that group before I put them on YouTube. You can also get help with any questions you're having. Visit the link below, click on the join group button, and I'll approve your request right away. All right, so I'll see you in there. Talk soon.